Now we're moving back to the mechanical workshop, and this is part of the axial piston trilink pump designed by Robert Clerk being machined. Um, this is one of the most complicated bits of it. It's the pump head, and there are innumerable holes joining different bits of the pump to other bits. Um, quite an expensive piece of metal that time. by that time. The unit could handle about 600 kilowatts, and it's half the size that we'd use uh, for the full power machine. It's the biggest we can make in our workshop. Um, nevertheless, 600 kilowatts is a fair, fair amount of power. And that's one of the long drillways being done. This is the other end of the pump. That's the entire pump body with some of its insides. An electrical machine of that rating would be very, very much bigger indeed. The parts were machined by Matthew Ree and Carl Gibson and Andrew Rose. The displacement's controlled by this swash plate, where the angle changes like that, and the stroke of the pistons is altered so that the amount of work that's done on each rotation is different. And that's an assembly of the innards. You see a piston going up and down in its cylinder, and the sort of motion that it would go through if the swash plate was tilted. Three of those little trilinks take the torque from the rotating swash plate to the shaft and give it the degrees of freedom that it wants. It's a rather nice mechanism with spherical bearings everywhere so that the casing can be really very, very compliant, unlike most hydraulic machines. 